my Canon FL 135 f3.5 is a, is a great little lens, but um, as I've said in other videos, uh, a review of a vintage lens will um, was always have a fair amount of uh, subjectivity. Uh, in fact, I think most things do. Um, as peculiarities, you know, like relating to this, this actual lens uh, used in the review um, and possibly decades of use can uh, alter the performance and, and the characteristics uh, of a lens uh, quite a bit. A couple of different models of uh, the Canon FL 135mm lenses were produced uh, for the Canon uh, FL lens mount. Um, two were produced in the original old FL style like this, or the old FD style with a, a silver locking ring uh, for the breech lock mount on the base. I'll take mine off, there we go. Uh, while three models were produced as the new FD lenses. We know them as those all black lenses with a green lettering. Uh, the, the FL mount was first introduced in 1964 uh, for the Canon FX camera and was in turn replaced in 1971 by the Canon FD lens mount. Now the, the FD mount cameras are backwardly compatible um, to use these uh, FL lenses too. The 135mm f3.5, this one was produced, uh, first produced actually in 1966 and it had a magenta coating. Now later um, the super spectra coating was developed or the SSC and this would be added to the f2.5 uh, versions a little bit later denoted as the um, 135 SSC1 and later the 2. Uh, now let's just have a look at some of the basic technical specs of this lens. A relatively fast, in my opinion, 3.5. Um, the closest focusing distance is 1.5 meters. Uh, for 135mm one, that's fine and obviously it focuses all the way to infinity as one would expect. Uh, it has a 48 millimeter filter size which is useful um, as it is quite a common filter size and it's easy enough to find filters and adapters and rings for it. <laughs> this little lens is only 83 millimeters long and has a diameter of 62 millimeters and weighs only 434 grams. Now if you're used to modern large aperture autofocus lenses, <clears throat> this feels like a feather. I mean really, it's a, it's a very sturdy little feather, uh, but it is very light in comparison. It still, it still retains a solid feel though, so it doesn't feel flimsy at all as it's a full metal construction. Uh, I cannot find one a date code on the lens and it seems to be an issue with the, with the, with the FL lenses, the breech lock ones, um, in that there's no date serial printed there, so I have no way of telling what the date is. But I know that this was produced before 1971 and. Uh, the first model was produced in 1966, so it gives me a five-year period, but we know that this was also replaced by the f2.5, so possibly 1966 to 1968. Um, so we can determine this age as being between 51 and 56 years old currently, quite an old lens. Now, my lens, uh, like I said, is an absolute showroom mint condition. Uh, the focus throw is actually quite stiff, firm, and stiff is the wrong word. Uh, it took a little bit of turning and moving it to get it sort of just to, you know, move smooth again. I think it sat just doing nothing for a long time. Uh, the aperture clicks are firm, and every part of the, the barrel is secure with no play. For video, you might want to de-click this. Uh, it is indeed built like a tank, uh, and I really do like that feel in my hand. Um, there is no fungus and uh, no scratches to be found anywhere, not even on the barrel. There's a tiny little dust, dust spot here and there, but I haven't picked up anything in the images. Uh, and this is not bad for a lens that's, you know, pushing 60 years, it's older than half a century. Uh, I took out the lens for a spin on my Canon R6 using an FD EF ad adapter and in turn an EFR adapter. Now, this is not ideal, uh, but FDR adapters are still very hard to come by in South Africa. They are available on Amazon, but uh, for me down here, it's still a little bit pricey with import and shipping, etc. Uh, I shot everything handled, uh, some in 4K 50 frames per second and some in 100 frames per second full HD. 
and actually the IBIS of the R6 does not work as it with, with an IS lens. And at 135 millimeter, even full frame, it is difficult to shoot video without jitters. Um, I, I dare say impossible if you don't have some sort of uh, support. Um, but I did my best. This lens is still very, very sharp. There are no discernible aberrations, no ghosting whatsoever that I've picked up. And even when shooting straight into the sun, there is no ghosting. Um, there is fringing on, on some highlights, but no more than any of my EF lenses that I use currently, actually, are the L-series lenses. Uh, considering that there were two adapters uh, in front of the lens, um, or behind the lens, uh, I'm even more impressed. I am inclined to say that this lens is as sharp as, as some of the, not necessarily the L series, but the EF lenses that I have owned in the past, and definitely some of the aftermarket lenses that you find uh, by anima other manufacturers, modern ones, this lens is as sharp, if not sharper than some of them. And even though this lens did not yet employ the super spectra coating, which was a more advanced coating, uh, it, with this magenta coating, it still had beautiful colors, nice saturation, sort of in that Canon um, character that you find. Um, and it also might have to do with the fact that there's only three uh, glass elements uh, in, in this lens, which uh, definitely aids, it's a prime lens obviously, and that aids with the clarity that you find in, uh, in, in, in images coming from, from prime lenses is the fact that there aren't that many glass elements. Uh, the flare that I found with this is a satisfying gradient in, high, in highlight areas, uh, but you do find that well-known 135 millimeter flare balls uh, at sa some angles if you shoot into the sun, which is, which is actually quite cool, very cinematic. If I had to have a criticism, it's that this lens, my particular one, might almost be too good. Uh, many people would prefer an old vintage lens to have some quirkiness, you know, uh, color cast or vibes, a bit like my Soligor 24 millimeter. This lens is neutral and performs optically like, much like a modern lens. I'm in my 40s now, so manual focus is getting harder <laughs> for me to get tack sharp focus, if, especially if I'm shooting on a small screen and focusing on a small screen. Uh, but with a bigger screen, follow focus, this could be awesome for your uh, cinema arsenal. Currently on eBay for between $20 and $150, obviously. You know, that's second-hand goods are always a bit of a wide gamut of prices, but you can pick up one of these for those prices. Most seem to price around $40. I paid uh, $35 for mine in converted from South African rands. And you might not be as lucky as I am and you might get a lens with issues, but I mean, this should give you an idea of what the lens was like in the 60s. Uh, but that concludes my review of the Canon FL 135mm f3.5 lens. I will see you again. Thank you very much for watching.